Yo, it's your boy Coinstock, back at it again, stuffing these duffel bags and collecting that cheddar. Before I begin, please, please, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, disclaimer, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm just a friend trying to educate you. And woo boy, all right, I'm going to show you, I got two big announcements. Well, like, uh, we're going to look through what's happening in MM Finance today. One of them, kind of bad news, really, but then uh, the second bit of news is actually some uplifting news like still growing the ecosystem and you'll find both of those in the end i just want to go over the metrics right now so now i believe last week was like or at least five days ago i made an mm finance video and we were down like 90 percent or something like that and now it's a dollar 21 cents so 1.7 percent on the green so it's still chugging along right and uh, there's the circulating supply, total supply, max supply, market cap, blah, 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 blah. I really want to get into this news that we're going to be talking about. All right. So this is the 24-hour. I mean, but we need to look at the bit bigger picture. If the chart will load. Let's see. <clears throat> so it's still chugging along, right? There's still that l little down period there, but boom, shaka, lock, it's pulling back up. All right. Now we did experience an all-time high 16 hours ago, a dollar and 24 cents, and it, well, we're like 2.6 percent on the red compared to that. But let's go ahead and look at a chrono scan real quick because I really want to get in on this news. Hold on, let me see something real quick. Need to get the contract address. Copy again. Let's see. Well, it's not loading, so forget about it. <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. Now, hold on. The news is kind of uh, huge here, right? All right, so Mad Meerkat Finance. So there's about roughly 22,058, and I remember the last time I did a video, it was like around like 20,800. So there's that. You see that. Now, um, let's also look at the liquidity real quick, right? If it'll load, oh my goodness, my computer's being so slow, man. Um, oh, okay, <laughs> there we go. So now we got $1.5 billion in liquidity. So we were all the way down here, like December 12th, 2021, right? Uh, just roughly, like $90 million, like $90.5 million. And now we're all the way up at $1.5 billion. Like we like this project still has a long way to go. There's still more to do with it. But <clears throat> enough of that said, I really want to get into this news. So Serval Finance post mortem analysis and recovery. So basically Serval Finance, that was the first Madbox project, just completely uh face planted. Just completely just flopped on its face. <clears throat> now let's get more into it and I'll give my own little spins on it, but so far <clears throat> Our recent Madbox project, Serval Finance, faced an issue where a Solidity developer within the team went rogue and stole funds. After investigating, let us share the sequence of events that transpired and also share a little about how the MM team seeks to right the wrong and potentially help users to recover their funds. Now, I covered uh, this Madbox project about Serval Finance, and people did in the comments did bring up a really good point. It's like, why is it at $10 if it's going to be pegged at $1? Which, frankly, yeah, I already kind of saw through the lines there. I was like, ah, eh, nah, you know, it's just like something to look at. I mean, come to your own conclusions. You know, I'm not a financial advisor or anything, but um, when it did launch, I don't know how many days it, it was launched up, up, I think it was like for two, three days, and then the price just plummeted. And so I believe it's one of their lead developers. Um, they call him Dark Horse. And uh, he just took all the uh, money out of it. But there's more into it. They bring whole nuance to it. So we quickly spotted dubious transactions being made from a couple of wallets that minted out new amounts of SRV tokens to sell on the open market, as you can tell. Yeah, they would mint more SRV tokens. So our team then got into contact with the Serval Finance team to which it was confirmed that the lead contract developer is absconded with some of the raised funds as well as having minted tokens to sell on the market. Now here's, now you're probably thinking to yourself, like, okay, 
what does that have to do with funds? Like, uh, like people have lost their funds. What can they do with that? And the MM finance, uh, dev team is behind you 100%. And you know what? It's great to be in this Kronos chain because we have one of the like most liquid, uh, exchanges around and they might actually help us out in this scenario. Um, they're like the MM finance team has since contacted the Kronos and crypto.com team to aid in recovering stolen funds. If this rogue developer intends to cash out, right? So the serval finance team has also revealed personal identifying information of the rogue developer to our team. Okay, now here's the thing that just sounds so gangster. <laughs> like, listen to this. Meanwhile, transactions have been traced to a few core wallets. We now provide Dark Horse with 24 hours to return the funds to this wallet right there, of which failure to do so will result in our team releasing all personal identifying information to the relevant authorities. Now, that sounded kind of gangster. Now, what does this all mean right here? So, the team has not only talked, to the Kronos organization, but also the crypto.com team to help aid in recovering stolen funds. I don't know how exactly that's going to work, but crypto.com is actually extremely liquid. I could totally see them saving uh, projects here and there, there, especially big projects in the uh, ecosystem. So maybe they might help replenish the funds to the platform, or they might directly send it off to uh, users of the platform. Don't know. It's still relatively new. This is what I think this is like seven hours of them posting. I said how this how how this happened. There were already re people were saying there were already red flags and why didn't they do audits? And uh, they're basically saying uh, that they had full faith in the team. They're like the Serval team came across as an honest and genuine team who has placed lots of efforts into their project. This is manifest in. in in items such as the NFT art they have tirelessly crafted alongside constant communication with our team over the past one and a half months to build confidence. And despite ultimately being convinced by the Serval team by their genuineness, our team tends to still err on the side of caution. This is also why we conduct KYC with launchpad teams as a final check. Should there be any unforeseen circumstances such as today, we are in control of the situation. So they they got tabs, right? And not only them are conducting KYC for the pay, launch pads, it's also things like rug doc or other, um, pro, well, like other... Uh, uh, auditing teams, like third party teams, there's going to be third party teams knowing the identities of these bad actors when it comes to these launch pad projects. So our team understands that plenty of our users have invested into the serval finance mad box and now are in deficit. We will be compensating users via an airdrop. So people will have an airdrop of their funds that were taken from the uh, serval finance team. Uh, there's a little bit more here before we go into the next bit of news. In short, this three-pronged KYC check will ensure the identities of the particip participating projects are known to more than one party. However, we would like to emphasize that any developer's decision to rug is based on their personal risk factor. And it talks about like uh, Dark Horse, which was the leading developer in the Serval Finance project, didn't really weigh out the risk to reward since they do have personal information of his and they might release in 24 hours. I mean, there's not much else to this. Yeah, I didn't think so. So let's go ahead and now get into the good bit of news. So this is that. I think we should all be transparent about that. I don't even remember what I said in the Serval Finance video. Hopefully, I mean, I think I would say come to your own conclusions, but just remember, this is crypto, bro. 100% crypto. Anything could happen. But all right, let's go to the new. <laughs> Here's the irony here. The 10th Launchpad Project. <laughs> All right, so Pegasus Dollar. It's the first algorithmic token pegged to METF. And if you don't know what METF is, that's the uh, Ohm fork, right? And it's not connected to SVN. Well, it is connected to SVN in a very special way. And that's what kind of makes it kind of neat. So like this Pegasus Dollar, it's connected to this Ohm fork and may um, add more liquidity to this METF, which METF sells bonds, and then there'd be more liquidity for MMF. Like it all just transpires and go ba goes back to MMF. Yet again, I'm going to say, 
This is not from the MMF team. So be careful, like Servo Finance wasn't from the MMF team. This project is not from the MMF team. So, I mean, do some more, do your own research and come to your own conclusions, all right? But we're gonna get into this one real quick. All right, so the Pegasus Dollar Protocol was created by the Pegasus team as a Kronos Chain algorithmic token pegged to METF. Pretty straightforward. We've see it, seen it with uh, Savannah Finance. So, I mean, we could just scroll down real quick. So, PES tokens, it's a three token system, are designed to be used as a means of exchange. The protocol's built in stability mechanism, determini deterministically, excuse me, expands and contracts the PES supply to keep the PES pegged to one METF token. So we've seen it with SVN, where it tries to keep its peg to the MMF, and that's really helped significantly with the MMF token. Now, we got another token that is staying pegged to METF, and METF is staying pegged to MMF. So there's three layers there. Like, we've seen it with two layers, with Savannah Finance and MMF, but now we're seeing this PES token, the METF token, and then which is also pegged to the MMF token. Kind of neat, ain't it? It's it's like Inception, but yet again, like I said, not from the MMF team. And uh, there's more to this article, but it's just talking about the um, other tokens that's there, and it's just the same as uh, Savannah Finance if you're in it. And here's the kicker right here, the sale details. PES sale will take place at MM Finance and will last for six hours and you will need Savannah SVN to participate. So this is the first time where we didn't need MMF during a launch pad project, we need SVN, which changes the whole game, right? Because they're keeping the SVN out of circulation, but SVN is pegged to MMF. So, and they're interlocked in the uh, liquidity, I believe that SVN is second behind MMF with having the most liquidity over like MMF. Well, it's connected with MMF, heavily connected. So when SVN goes up, MMF can also see some gains. It's just, you know, money going around, money going everywhere. But yet again, I'm going to say that this is not from the MMF team. So be careful. Come go to your own conclusions. I'm not a financial advisor. You know, you know how it goes, but yeah, that's basically it. This is the first time they're us utilizing SVN for um, launchpad projects, which, and you could stake PES, METF, LP to earn MMF. So we'll see that on MM Optimizer, but, you know, I'm just keeping you up to date on the down low. What do I know anyway? But, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you this bit of news about the 10th launchpad project and this uh, dreadful news about Serval Finance. But hopefully there will be some recovery. Some people will get their money back, but who knows. But, uh, yeah, that's basically all I had to say. So I guess I'll uh, see you later, partner.